everybody, I'm Molly Stanberry, and you're watching MacMost, the video podcast that shows you how to get the most from your Mac, iPod, Apple TV, and in one month, your iPhone. Apple tops Business Week magazine's list of the world's most innovative companies for the third year in a row. Apple design excellence and new products like the iPhone gave it the edge over such companies as Google, which came in second, and Toyota, which came in third. That makes sense. I use Google Maps on my MacBook to find parking places for my Prius. While many colleges and high schools are requiring iPods for students, Mountain View High School is taking a different approach. They recently enacted a ban on iPods and other digital media players. This was after school officials realized some students were downloading formulas and other material onto the players in order to cheat on tests. Aspire Media released iQuizMaker a program that lets you make quizzes for Apple's newly released iQuiz game for fifth generation iPod owners. Hmm, maybe teachers could give tests on iPods instead of banning them. Apple is looking to make itself greener. In a letter to stockholders, Steve Jobs acknowledged criticism by environmental groups over Apple's use of toxic chemicals in manufacturing and Apple's recycling efforts. While citing examples of Apple being better than most computer manufacturers, Jobs promised to move Apple to mercury-free LED lighting for LCD screens and more environmentally friendly materials in future manufacturing. For more information on this story, let's go to our senior environmental correspondent, Amy Treehucker. Amy, now why are environmental groups so upset with Apple? Well, first off, they are very disappointed that Apple Macintoshes aren't organically grown Macintosh apples. Or apples at all. You're, you're kidding, right? No. Environmentalists never kid. Oh no, the sky is falling! Made you look. Seriously, when they discovered that computers are made of metals and plastics, they freaked. But isn't Apple one of the more environmentally friendly computer makers? Yes. In fact, Apple made two of the greenest computers ever manufactured. The Lime Green iMac and the Key Lime iBook. Many environmental groups that bought these iMacs were very upset when Apple stopped making them. So what is Apple going to have to do to get back on the environmentalists' good side? Well, having the Goracle, I mean Al Gore, on the Apple board went a long way. But until Apple makes a computer that runs on solar power and absorbs greenhouse gases, they won't be happy. But that means the computer would actually have to be a plant. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. Uh, Amy Treehugger, our environmental correspondent, thanks for your report. Peace out. Okay, someone just sent you an important Microsoft Word document and you realize you don't have Microsoft Word on your Mac. So what are you going to do? No worries, here's an easy way to read your Microsoft Word documents. Simply right or control click on the document. In the contextual menu, choose Open With and then choose Text Edit. And bada bing, there's your document for your reading pleasure. Today, Gary's going to show us how to use the dictionary and thesaurus in OS X. Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com, and today I'm going to show you how to use the handy dictionary and thesaurus application that comes with Mac OS X. So, you could find this handy application that a lot of Mac users doesn't even know is there by looking at your Applications folder, just looking under D for dictionary. When you run the dictionary, you just come up with a simple dictionary and thesaurus application. Type in any word you want, and it will look it up for you. And you've got both your dictionary definition, and at the bottom you've got your thesaurus definition. So it's very easy to enlarge the font, and check things out, and it's actually the Oxford English Dictionary, so it's a pretty good authoritative source, and it just comes as part of Mac OS X. Uh, give it a try. Thanks. This is Gary with MacMost.com. If you have a question that you would like us to answer on air, email us at questions at macmost.com. Our must download for this week is Google Earth. Why? Because once you start spinning the Earth and exploring the world, you'll never know how you live without it. I use it for everything from finding the closest burger joint to spying on nude beaches in France. <clears throat> to download Google Earth, go to the Google Earth page at earth.google.com and click on the download link. Or you can go to macmost.com for a link to the download page. <laughs> 
Apple's Loot is our contest segment where we come up with an Apple-related question or challenge and send a randomly drawn winner a prize. Last week's randomly drawn winner was David McGraw. David knew that the Blackbird was the code name for the Uber Secret PowerBook 500 series. This week's challenge is, on what date was the first iPod announced? Send your answers to loot at macmost.com. Thanks for watching the MacMost video podcast. If you want to contact us, have an Apple-related product you'd like us to review, or would like to sponsor an episode of MacMost, you can email us at podcast at macmost.com. Be sure to visit our website for the latest news and to vote on the stories that you think are the most interesting. We'll also be posting tutorials and tips on our website throughout the week. This is Molly Stanberry for MacMost. I'll see you next week. Bada bing, bada bing, bada bing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. And a bada bing. There's your document for your reading pleasure. And bada bing. There's the document for your reading pleasure. And voila, the document is available for your reading pleasure. <laughs> and abracadabra, abracadam. And after clicking your heels three times and knocking twice on your head, for well, good luck. You have your document, hopefully, for your reading pleasure.